Hello. Welcome to our time at the foot of the cross. My name is Debbie Pau and I'm Associate Priest at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. This online service contains our readings and reflections that will be used at St Mary's for the hour at the cross. These readings won't last the hour. If you'd like to spread them across the hour, do pause them uh, after the end of each reflection. There'll be a couple of minutes between one reflection and the next reading for those who want to take it at a faster pace, but still with some, some pause. With all the images that we've seen recently from Ukraine, with our experiences of COVID and the very real difficulties that so many are experiencing, we've taken at this harrowing time of reflection of Jesus on the cross, some of the colours that come from each reading. It's a difficult, difficult time when we're feeling particularly low and I've tried to maintain some form of positivity within that as well as reflection on what Jesus suffered and some reflection for ourselves too. Before we begin, for my first reading, let's take a moment of pause. Our first colour is green and the reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 18. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So the soldiers, their commanding officer and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. First they took him to Anas the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who told the other Jewish leaders, but that one should die for all. Simon Peter followed along behind, as did another of the disciples. That other disciple was acquainted with the high priest and so he was allowed to enter the courtyard with Jesus. Peter stood outside the gate. Then the other disciples spoke to the woman watching at the gate, and she let Peter in. The woman asked Peter, Aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? No, he said, I am not. The guards and the household servants were standing around a charcoal fire they had made because it was cold. And Peter stood there with them, warming himself. Inside, the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Jesus replied, what I teach is widely known because I have preached regularly in the synagogue and the temple. I've been heard by people everywhere and I teach nothing in private that I have not said in public. Why are you asking me this question? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said. One of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus on the face. Is that the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. Jesus replied, if I had said anything wrong, you must give evidence for it. Should you hit a man for telling the truth? 
than an ass, bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Passover, the time of Jesus' arrest, happens in the spring. The season of green, the season when the earth it fling, it shows all its fertility. The earth that was flung into being by the hands of the one now bound. The author of all life. Green too is the colour of wisdom that was found in abundance in the stories and the teaching of a carpenter's son from Nazareth. The green of the spring is also the green of envy. It was the green it was the root of the religious leaders' desire to arrest and have Jesus killed. How could they let this upstart go on? How could they allow him to continue drawing crowds to challenge their teaching? How could they let their hard-earned authority be dissipated by this man with scant regard for their laws, for their holiness. How could they see Jesus for anything other than the scum that he was, that caught their eye, that was so unlike them? Of course, We'd never be envious of anyone else. We'd never put someone down because they had something that we didn't. Charisma, perhaps. Followings. Popularity. We'd never put them down because they challenged us, threatened us, would we?
Our second reading comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 15. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, other leaders and teachers of religious law, the entire High Council met to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. Then the leading priests accused him of many crimes. And Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to say something? What about all these charges against you? But Jesus said nothing at all, much to Pilate's surprise. Now it's the governor's custom to release one prisoner each year at Passover time, anyone the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, convicted along with others for murder at an insurrection. The mob began to crowd <coughs> in toward Pilate, asking him to re release a prisoner as usual. Should I give you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked, for he realised by now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point, the leading priests stirred up the mob to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. <coughs> but if I be release Barabbas, Pilate asked them, what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the crowd only roared, roared louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to please the crowd, released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to crucify him. The day breaks, the warm golden light of the sun breaks through, bringing the earth, <clears throat> bathing the earth and dispelling the chill of the night, bringing with it not just light to see by, but its promise of hope and well-being. Jesus came to bring light and hope into the world. Light that he shared with all who would listen or watch. Hope to all who were excluded, the sick, the suffering. Reaching out always to those on the edges of society. Always showing the warmth and welcome of God. Showing the hope that people with God's help could overcome that which they couldn't manage by themselves. We love to see the sun. Yellow makes us feel better. But yellow is also the colour of cowardice. Peter, 
who professes that he will remain with Jesus till the end, even if it means dying with him, <clears throat> flees or denies Jesus once Jesus is arrested. All the other disciples too flee, bar one. And of course we know the way that Peter regretted his denial, the way that he learned from it, the way he was forgiven and empowered by the risen Jesus. But that's still to come. In this Jesus' hour of need, Peter and the others are all gone. Not even there to offer their support in the form of their presence. And Pilate, Pilate for whom the world thought was the man of power, the man charged with ensuring that justice is done in that corner of the Roman Empire. Pilate, whose word would have been law, shows his weakness in the face of the crowd. Afraid that his position was in jeopardy, should they revolt. Not even a heartfelt warning from his wife, an awareness of a higher power, of a divine power, could, make, could change his resolve. Instead, he washes his hands. His decision to crucify Jesus irreversible. An innocent man is condemned to die. Of course, we would never de <clears throat> deny our friend in an hour of need. We'd never put someone down in order to save ourselves, would we?
Our third reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. <clears throat> Some of the governor's soldiers took Jesus into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. He made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. And they placed a stick in, the, in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery. They yelled, Hail, the King of the Jews! And they spat on him. They grabbed the stick and they beat him on the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. As they went on their way, they came across a man named Simon. He was from Cyrene and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Then they went to the place called Golgotha, which means the skull. The soldiers gave him wine mixed with bitter gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as Jesus hung there. A signboard <clears throat> was fastened to the cross above Jesus' head. It announced the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. They stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Scarlet, the same colour that saved Jesus' ancestor, the prostitute Rahab, when Jericho fell after she'd hidden Israel's spies on their recce <clears throat> into the promised land, way before they actually arrived there. All those hundreds of years before, symbolism of scarlet, the colour of courage, of passion, of love, of health and vigour. Red is also the colour of war, of anger. Jesus, beaten and bloodied, still has the courage to face his crucifixion, to face the anger of those against him, knowing full well the suffering in the true sense of the word passion, which means to suffer, the suffering that was still to come, but determined in all of the pain, to show the love of God <clears throat> in that pain and in humiliation and in the shame. Red is also a colour we associate with embarrassment. Jesus was not just embarrassed, the courageous saviour was humiliated. And he was utterly shamed. He was hung on the cross naked. 
not even with the dignity of the loincloth that is always put on <clears throat> the depiction of him on the cross, that always drapes his modesty. But he would have been crucified, totally naked, totally exposed, with all the indignity of his bodily functions as he slowly asphyxiated, as he slowly lost control of them, as he slowly died. Jesus, full of courage, compassion and love, determined that the worst that humanity could throw at him would be absorbed in his body on the cross. That no one would suffer pain or shame or humiliation without his going there too. Our final reading comes from Mark's Gospel, <clears throat> chapter 15. At noon, darkness fell across the land until three o'clock. Then, at that time, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Labak Samatani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood, thought he was, pro he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a stick so he could drink. Leave him alone. <clears throat> Another loud cry. 
Let's see if Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing Jesus <clears throat> saw how he died, he exclaimed, Truly, this was the Son of God. It was noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. The darkness that spoke of the forthcoming death of Christ. Black is the absence of colour of all that gives life vibrancy and vitality the black dog of depression and in some senses black is not a color at all it is just an absence of color and in that absence, it represents fear, sadness. But in its non-colour as a colour, it also speaks of mystery. How could God, a God of love forsake his only son? in his hour of need. How could the weight of the sin of the world land on Jesus' shoulders as he hung on the cross? How could God, whose name was so revered that it couldn't even be uttered by the Jewish people, How could he sink so low as to suffer a criminal's death in the most barbaric fashion? How could the death of a leader give life to the movement he founded? How could a criminal ever be worshipped and glorified? How could the author of life, of light, of hope, have his life extinguished so brutally? 